What's going on, guys? Welcome back to episode 46 of the Offshore Games. Cast Dave here, here. Oh, here. Wow, what? Hey. Dylan here, here. Why the double here? <sighs> oh, boy. <laughs> were, you, were you trying to do something on the fly, and your brain is so dead that it was just a, here, 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 here. Present. Pre- <laughs> I'm ready. Ah, are you ready for some merch? OffshoreGamesCast.com slash merch. We got clothing and all sorts of fun accessories like stickers and a skateboard. And a stickers. And stickers and magnets and mugs, shirts, t-shirts, tank tops, long sleeves, hoodies. We got pants. We don't have pants. I'd wear some pants. I'm wearing pants. Pants may happen. All right. You can get some with our logo on it. You can get some with the text, the, that Offshore Gamescast text. Got some good looking stuff. Go check it out. Help support us. It is Pretty much the only way to actually financially support what we're doing here. So only we if appreciate you want to. It. Only if you want to. No pressure. No pressure at all. <laughs> also, uh, hopefully by this weekend, we are still going to have two PAX videos going up because we went to PAX East. We'll be talking about some of the games we played later here on the show, but we'll have a whole video of everything we played along with like kind of a behind the scenes travel vlog thing. Hopefully by this weekend, it is, it is being worked on. Editing, it takes time. It's not, it's not quick. No. It, you can't just look at it and it edits itself, I wish. Yeah, especially if you want it to look good, everything yeah. line up. So it is It is being worked on. Have not forgotten about it. It is still happening. With that out of the way, how about we talk about some video games? Let's hop into some video games. Let's I... hop into them like Super Mario 64 into a painting. Ooh. No, I want to play Super Mario 64. <laughs> That's a good fucking game. What'd you play, Dave? I hop back into some Wonderlands. And I am just beelining it now. Not even worrying about the side stuff. Not at the moment. Like if I if I feel the energy and in the in the, the want, I will. But with so many other games going on, and it just feels like life taking over. Like I just want to be able to hop back into games and just play them and just feel that nice satisfaction I get when I mm-hmm. beat them. Because that's like sometimes it's just even better just to know that like I I've completed something. Right. And. I I like Wonderlands. I think it's a lot of fun. I just think it's a little different from the what I what I'm used to with the Borderlands stuff, but it's it's still enjoyable, and I want to keep going with it. And I'm looking to finish it. Um, it's like I don't know if it's just like games in general are just like not nearly as like big of my focus at the moment. Could be, you know, life happens. It does, but it's like I don't know. There's just Games come out, and it's like, oh, I'm super excited. I'm like, all right, it's not exactly what I thought it would be. That, too. Yeah. Like Especially I, with, like, Tiny t- Like, you love Borderlands. Yeah. And this is... It, it's different. It's frustrating, because it's like, I look at Wonderlands, I look at Horizon 2, and I look at Dying Light 2, and it's like, they're all great, but different from the other, like, the previous ones. Mm-hmm. And it's like, ah, I just... <sighs> Yeah, I don't know what it is about this Second Horizon for me. To, I mean, like, I, you know, I'm not like a big Dying Light or Borderlands guy. Yeah, but Horizon really liked Forbidden. Uh, sorry, Zero Dawn. Oh yeah, and now Forbidden West. It's just not hooking me. I don't get it either because I feel the same way, and I want to just like, I it it almost feels like exhausting wanting to just load yeah. it up and try it again, and like it. It, it it's a similar feeling that I get when I start like a brand new game, like a brand new IP or anything. It's like, all right, time to learn. And it's mm-hmm. like, I'm too, my brain is not ready to learn. My brain just wants to shut off and just do whatever. Right. Yeah. It's yeah. It, it probably doesn't help that like big game after big game after big game after big game was like really coming out there for a while. Yeah. So another big open world RPG like horizon is just like, absolutely. All right. There's like in the back of my head, I know I'm playing over ten other games right now, mm-hmm. and then there's this which is going to take like five million hours if you want to do everything. And it's like here's the thing with the Wonderlands too. It's it's a different formula, in a way, gameplay wise, where it it makes it makes sense for the setting and the theme that they're going for, mm-hmm. but in the actual like process of playing it, it's like boring and frustrating in a way because it's a, very similar to like the first thing i think of is like shadow warrior 3 where they just kind of had a lot of arenas and like that's just kind of what you right. did so it's like you'll have a mission but it's like take this for example you have a mission 
And in order to get to, like, the next area, there's a side quest waiting next to it where it's like, all right, this is a D&D game. Talk to the person, get the side quest in order to do what you do. And so you go in and you go to the shrine or whatever and or, or the dungeon, and it's like, all right, here's this arena. Take all the enemies out. Portal opens up. Here's a second arena. Take all the enemies out. Maybe there's a third one, but a little chest pops up. You get what you need. Go over do the thing, go into the next area. And it's just, I don't know. It's so, so just repetitive arena based Mm -hmm. and it doesn't feel as like fluid as just running around the world and like doing things and like the big maps. It's just like, all right, here's a small little thing, fight these, go to the next small little thing, fight some more of these. And it's just, I don't know. It feels so disconnected. I like what they're doing and I like the theme of it, but I just don't know if it like is fitting with me at the moment. Okay. Mm-hmm. There's nothing wrong with that. No. Not everything's going to blow you out of the water. That is an interesting reference if you played the game. I th- You talked about that. Yeah, because the wall should blow up. Yeah, because we talked about how you were saying it wasn't dry. Yeah. But it was dry. Yeah. <laughs> is that it? That's pretty much all I got for that. I'm just... I, I think I did two missions, and I he, the other thing I realized too is that like when I was doing some of the side missions and whatnot, like I, I I did an entire main mission, and I think the entirety of it took over an hour of is just it? constant extra arenas and fighting. And oh, okay. They they definitely slowed the pacing down for certain missions because there were some there's some ones in Borderlands one and two that you could get done in like. 15 20 minutes mm-hmm. and like you it, but there's like enough content there and it feels like the story is shorter here and they just spread out a lot of that combat to like really fill it up or it's like it's the things are a little slower and like the the, the pacing combat wise is like all right you could you're kind of evenly matched in a way since all the enemies are just constantly matching your level instead of doing like a normal mode ultimate like true vault hunter mode where it's like you can run through again and even that, like, I'm so used to just creating a new character or just taking my character and going into the next gameplay, doing new game plus and just continually progressing and building. Mm-hmm. And it, this feels too, it, I, like, I don't want to say it's too, like, for everybody, but it's like, I just got so used to the way that it was. And just even like the smallest changes, it's like very noticeable. And it's like, ah, oh, it's not, it's not what I wanted. You wanted more of the setting, but for it to still be like a Borderlands ass Borderlands game. Yeah, but it's like you can't really have that without some changes and whatnot, yeah. and just improvements or like whatever they feel like can be used to make the game better in in their eyes. But it's like for me personally, it's like bah humbug, bah humbug. Yeah, it's not that time of year. I mean, it's 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 something if I if I don't feel like. 100 percenting a Borderlands game. Yeah, that is that is something. Yeah. Are you sick? Or is Tiny Tina sick? I just think I just think the wrong apple fell from the right tree. I like that. I like that saying. Is that an actual saying or did you just say that? I don't know. I like it. Thank you. Because it makes sense. That's good. For so... you, the Borderlands tree is great. Yeah. But then an apple fell from it and it's it's not the apple you wanted. I've over time, I've even played through the pre-sequel like 3 or 4 times all the way through and done every single side mission. That's the one that like no one likes, right? Oh yeah. Okay. I mean, I'll probably end up doing everything in this game eventually if I have the time, but it's just like at the moment it's mm-hmm. just not gripping. I got something that's kind of gripping me. Tell me. Is it tight? Ghostwire Tokyo is so tight. <laughs> oh, I want to play it so bad. Uh, yeah, it's so. Uh, I only played for like a a few more hours. It's been uh, we spent a lot of our free time at PAX this week. Oh yeah, and working. So sleep. Yeah, sleep is important. Driving. You, I you did a lot in. of that. I sat. Yeah. Well, I sat too. That's true. Yeah. If I'm standing up and driving, we have many. <laughs> Something's problems. wrong. This is the Flintstones. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I got, uh, I don't know if you remember me talking about how, like, I have wind and fire. Yeah. I now have water, too. And. See, why not just somebody make a first-person Avatar game? So, I mean, this is kind of that. That's fucking cool. In Tokyo. (laughs) 
mm-hmm. and spooky. Um, so the way to kind of equate this to a normal first person shooter, think of wind as like your standard default pistol. Okay. It is old, reliable. You can always go to it. It's kind of like all around. It gets the job done. Mm-hmm. Fire is kind of like a, so it's not really how like the motion It's not like a projectile in that way, but it think of it as like a heavy grenade or like a grenade launcher. Okay. You have less ammo for that, but it does a lot of damage. Mm-hmm. Water is kind of your shotgun. It's mm. more for up close with like when they're up close and a good spread. Okay. So kind of balancing that out now with more elements is making combat more interesting. Kind of like, oh, these enemies are flying kind of far away. I'm going to break out wind. And then all of a sudden I'm overwhelmed. So I'm going to break out water. Uh, and then if you charge, they all have like a charge thing. Mm-hmm. You charge water. You can then shoot it with a bigger spread and it'll kind of like go through enemies and like the ones behind them really push them back. So it, with more of these elements coming in and based on the weapons wheel, I mean, they're going to get more weapons or more elements. It, I'm really liking the combat. Is it more of a thing where it's like the enemies, like it's more situational based depending on what element you want to use? Or are there certain enemies where it's like, this will work better on this type of enemy? So I'm not sure about that quite yet, because mm-hmm. um, I know I, th- I think some reviews were coming out where it was saying like, yeah, it's kind of like you figure out what element works against what enemy, and it's kind of like matching that. So it got boring. I haven't seen that yet. At least not any obvious examples of like, oh, this enemy has a red thing on them. Use fire. Or like, yeah, like there's been nothing like that. So it definitely has been more situational, depending on like. Oh, okay. This Slender Man guy is a real big Slender Man guy. So mm-hmm. he's more powerful. I'm going to use fire to take him down quickly. These little ghost enemies are flying like up above and shooting me from far away. I'm going to break out wind for that. Or I'm getting overwhelmed by little headless ghost schoolgirls. So I'm going to use my water because they're all above me. Fucking holy water. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> so it, it's definitely more situational right now. Oh. Um, and I did just also unlock. This this will be kind of a grenade. It's not a grenade, but it's like this thing you throw down on the ground, and it'll basically cause like a uh, an AOE stun thing. So they're going more for like that type of stuff, mm-hmm. and it's it's cool. I also really gotta talk about the dogs. Hmm. The dogs are spectacular. Yeah, you just hear one barking as you're going through the city. You go to it for so my this is what I do. First, I always pet the dog first. Of course. Always. Every single dog. And it does it, it's a, oh, it does so good. It like zooms out on their face and you're like scratching the bottom of their face on the side and they're all happy. Then I read their mind and some of them <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yes. <laughs> you can read <laughs> Oh man. Did we not talk about that last week? I don't remember. Two weeks ago? I don't remember. I'm tired right now, and that was that was a great segue. Just <laughs> oh boy! So I read their mind, uh-huh. um, and sometimes it just oh, like one just it was just pet me, pet me, pet me, pet me, pet me, pet me. So I of course pet them again, and then I always give them dog food. I make sure I'm stocked up on dog food, and then they usually dig up some money for me. But some of them are sad. No, some of them are like. Uh, I, I know, I know Ryu's going to come back and get me soon. I just know it. And it's just like, aw. Aw. Everyone's dead. Yeah. <laughs> but me. But me. And then another one was like, oh, another human. Oh, I, I was so happy to see you. And it's just like, hmm. Yeah. It is. Ugh, the dogs are great. And then you have floating cats that run all the stalls and they're like vendors and will sing. Hmm. There's a little hierarchy system going on here. Yeah. It's not equal. It's definitely not equal. Uh Uh-oh. But the dogs maybe seem happier. Well, some of them. Depends. Yeah. One of them wanted to play fetch, so I spent quite a few minutes looking around like, is there anything I can throw? Right. It wasn't a thing, though. Damn. At least not that I know of. Not yet. Imagine you could be like, create a little ball of water, turn it into ice, and then just chuck it and then have them I would love that. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. I played for a few hours. Otherwise, it's still kind of like running around the city and doing side quests. Mm-hmm. And it's just it's <clears throat> it's fun. I like it. It's cool. Okay, I'm really excited to try it. 
It seems right up my alley. It is. It is very cool. Mm-hmm. Still going to phone booths to deposit spirits, as one does. That's cool though. It it is. It's like everything they do like that is just so weird and interesting. Mm-hmm. I, I miss. Like it. I miss fucking pay phones. When you read a dog's mind, it's because you're using something with KK, the dude in your head, mm-hmm. and you're just like, you put out your hand straight out with the palm facing down. And just, like, a drip noise happens, and this weird, long drip of water comes out of your hand. And then you could just, like, see everything around you and also read dogs' minds. Hmm. And it's just, like, weird why and cool. Why can't you read the cat vendors' minds? Because you could just talk to them. Damn. They just communicate with you. What the fuck's going on in Tokyo? <laughs> what happened? Uh, nothing good, let me tell you. You find all sorts of just clothes laying around. That had bodies in them at some point. Oh, yeah. They all shrunk. They all shrunk. Imagine they just all find each other and the, and you're just coming across like a giant amalgamation of small naked bodies. <laughs> I'm very... So, also, it it's kind of, like, funny. How, so, when you find spirits, they're always in, like, groups just floating of, like, multiple spirits. And they're always talking to each other. And the one, like... You get you catch a snippet of what they're saying, like as you are like collecting the spirits and you're Can you believe the final Jeopardy from last night? So yeah, one of them was like, Yeah, I can't believe the season finale they did for the like that's the type of shit they're talking about. (laughs) That's that's fucking great. (laughs) Yeah, it is. Shit, did I leave the oven on in my past life? (laughs) It's it's like it it is shit like that. That's so fucking funny. (laughs) I love that. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, that's that's all I played this week, other than pack shit. I uh, I started a new little I started a little game called Recompile, which I remember looking at a few months ago, and it's on Game Pass. So I was like, you know what? Let's try it. Not even on Game Pass. It's fucking. I did the Game Pass Cloud. I just fucking hopped right in. I said fuck it. So is the only difference you just didn't download it? Yeah, and it's it, I got the notification. Be like, you like this game? You want to you want to install it? I'm just like, no. <laughs> Are you kidding? What? I don't want to install it. The fuck would I do that? I could just play it. <laughs> So, uh, you start off as this little red digital virus looking thing. And the way that I can best describe it is, uh, imagine the dude from, uh, Scooby-Doo Cyber Chase. I, I can't. It's like, it's the best Scooby-Doo movie. Um, so he, you're this little red digital virus that's been put into this like mainframe, like tech system by this dude named Jameis or Janus and you have to go around it's a little metroidvania and you gotta collect little upgrades explore the area are yeah. you talking about the blue dude from Scooby Doo? Yes I I don't remember this movie but I know I've seen this dude. That movie's so fucking good. Like if you have any free time in the next four years please watch it I probably won't. I know <laughs> Anyway go on um, so you get to explore around a lot of it's like platforming. It's a lot of it's dark too. You give off this little like hue of like illumination around yourself. Cause you're like this actual like digital thing mm-hmm. and walking around. So it's like, I'll try to find like the ways to hop up and like platform around. And as in like the tutorial, numerous pathways were like falling apart and they're like, you, you just, there's probably another way. And I'm just like, <laughs> okay. It's like, a, a lot of it, too, is like, I don't know if I could climb on this, but it's like, oh, I guess I am. There's, like, just long pipes, and it's like, I feel like I'm going to fall off the side, or there's, like, the little bumps in the pipes where they connect. I got to hop over it. Like, the first ability that I got was the jump ability. Does it ever become, like, too hard to see what you're doing because of how dark it is, or is it, like, not actually that dark? I wouldn't say it's that dark, but okay. it's, like... A lot of it so far is like, all right, explore, look around. Okay. Like after the first hub section, it's like, all right, you can go this way, you can go this way, and then you have to do stuff to be able to unlock this part so you can go there. Mm -hmm. So I chose the first way, and the camera zooms out, and you just kind of see the entire section of it. And then it's like, all right, for this, you got to go and you got to jump on all the buttons to send the power through these like cables and like connect and like power up this whole area and occasionally there's some like enemies and whatnot the second upgrade i got ended up giving me this like little repulsor gun thing where i could just aim and like shoot and like take them out but if you take enough damage obviously you die you fall you die 
Um, if you fall off the map, you'll just get respawned like right back up top, and you'll lose like ten percent health. It's like your health is at the bottom, measured by percentage. Oh, okay. Um, and if you like die, die from an enemy, then I realized that I had to fully restart from the beginning, and like after all the progress I did of like the pushing the buttons and whatnot, it just starts back down at zero. That's annoying. And I go back to the place, and it zooms out again, and I'm just like. Ugh. Bad checkpointing can really, There's, really kind of fuck a game up. There are certain points, too, of these little, like, nodes that, like, you stand on, it'll light up, and it's like, all right, you found, like, a nice little, like, return spot, but it's like, if, I, I don't know if it's like, if you just die, die from an enemy or whatnot, you have to, like, restart, but it's like, all right, I, now I know that it's like, I gotta be much more wary and, like, figure out, like, how to get around and explore and do more. Those return points should just be checkpoints. They like, if sh- you die, you should just respawn at the, the most recent one you went to. They should. But I, 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 it's still very early. I only just started it today. It's a short game, though, which is another one of the reasons. I was like, all right, let's hop in. It's indie. It's something different. Like, mm-hmm. And I, I don't know. I was, I, I was feeling a Metroidvania. Like, I've been thinking about it. Like, I, I, I saw the one dude playing Control at PAX, and I was like, yeah. 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 Control's good. Control's really fucking good. It's really good. good. Um, but I'm going around. I'm collecting these little billies. There's, I, I don't know if you'll get this, but the enemies, these little cube and, like, circle enemies, they look like they're straight out of Code Lyoko. I don't know if I've heard the combination of those sounds in that way before. Code Lyoko is was an old uh, animated show, I think on like Cartoon Network or something, and it was it was really good. These kids would leave school, and it was like a regular like drawn animated thing, and then they'd hop over to like their base or whatever in this like small abandoned building, and they'd get into these little portals or their fucking like their little tubes, and they'd get sent into like the digital verse and the graphics would change like a 3d animation and they'd go around and like do whatever and solve shit it was that's a a cool concept it was a really good show like i could probably just sit home and just rewatch it i would love to it was awesome but the enemies kind of remind me of something similar to that these like weird cube enemies with like this this green circle eye and like there's a floating ball with like these triangle pegs sticking out of it and they they if they hit you they can do some damage and you have I have to aim the repulsor gun and like I have to I might have to mess with the sensitivity because I was missing a lot. But I was tra- it, it, is there any like auto aim help? Not really that I noticed. There's no like ammo either. It's just like you just keep shooting and it's okay. like fully auto and whatnot. I I don't know if there's any uh, upgrades or anything later on. Um, but the enemies are very sparse as well. Like I'll come across be like all right shit there's an enemy here and like have to like plan around it and like all right if i'm here and he's down there if i go over here and do this like it's especially knowing now that if i like die die from like them or whatever Mm -hmm. i don't think it shows any lives or anything and when i died like from an enemy is when it restarted but it's like all right fuck i'm in a situation like i have to like figure out and plan that and it, it makes combat more fun in that way yeah i was gonna ask if that like is making it better I think so, because it's okay. like, all right, now I really got to plan and move, because there isn't, like, a dodge button. There isn't, like, a roll. You just kind of got to run and, like, almost time it. It's like, all right, he's he'll shoot, so I either got to be over here, shoot him faster, or hide behind something. Okay. Um, there's also this scary, like, malevolent AI that I, I cannot that. mess with, apparently, and I woke it up. Uh-oh. And it saw me, and then it dipped. It fucking disappeared. And it's like, well, that's probably going to be a big boss later on. Probably. The game's only like four to five hours long. So that might be the big boss. Oh, yeah. I mean, I only saw him the once, but I keep hearing the dude talk about it. But apparently I'm this little virus and uh, the AI is like, oh, fuck. Got to get him out of here. And I'm like reconnecting everything and like trying to stop whatever the bad issue is. So you're a good virus. Uh, so, So I'm being told at the moment. Because Jameis, Janus, whatever, he's like, yeah, you're. I put you in here. I'll help you out. Can but we then, trust Janus though? Pff, I have no clue. Because I don't trust Janus. As soon as soon as the AI sees me, like I get like a little computer th- screen thing pop up, and it's like virus, 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 and then it's like, oh shit, and then it dipped. 
it was gone. But I don't know. It's I'm digging it. I don't know if it's just okay. like an indie thing or if it's just like the art style is cool with like the it's very simple. But it's like the little digital guy running around mm-hmm. this nice little world, and it is dark and like the little illumination and whatnot. I don't know I'm, I'm I'm in like a little explory mood in something like quick okay. and fun. I'm enjoying it so far. I remember having my eyes on it, and then I saw it again. I was like, "Why do you look so familiar?" And I said, "Fuck it, fuck it." And I hopped in a cloud like, version. Ooh, I like this. I'm digging it. Sometimes an indie game is what you need. Yeah, even if it it's just, just walking around jumping on buttons and taking mm-hmm. out an enemy every once in a while. There there's a a simplicity to a lot of indie games that just Yeah. It, a lot of big games make you think now. Oh <laughs> you yeah. You really got to think. This is one of those like fuck it I'm just going to turn my brain off. It's like all right, time to jump around. Uh-huh. And they, I, they they a lot of them have like a nostalgic feel to them. Yeah. I definitely fell way too many times off certain parts of the maps. I just kept falling and I'm like did Fuck. you do the thing where you would fall and then get kind of impatient and frustrated? So you're like, I'm just going to fucking blast through it. But because you're going so fast and you're starting to get frustrated, you fall off more and more? Kind of, but not necessarily. It's like I've fallen in places where it's like, fuck. Like there was a tiny little gap between this and like oh. the elevator I was hopping on. It's like, son of a bitch. And and then there's other places I'd like almost just fall off and I'd just slip down and be like, uh... <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. It'd be like that. It do be like that sometimes. And sometimes we go to PAX. We do go to PAX. Sometimes. Oh uh, yeah, we went to PAX. We got to play a decent amount of a decent amount of games, actually. Uh so I guess we're just gonna blast through these. Um so if you want more of like a, a visualization of a lot of these games. Go to the Offshore Gamescast YouTube channel. Like I said, hopefully by this weekend we'll have the video up where we're talking about all, pretty much all these games with some uh, some footage of like us playing the game itself. So you can kind of actually see what these games are like as we're talking about them. Uh, but if you want to just hear us talk about it, then stick around because that's what we're gonna do. So let's just let's just kind of talk about our PAX experience, Dave. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about this PAX. This PAX. Especially on... Th- we went Thursday and Friday. Yeah. Thursday, Thursday was great. It was great because it wasn't busy. <laughs> no, it was not at all what I was anticipating. We played almost everything we wanted to play on Thursday. It was what? Like maybe one game from each of us we didn't have time to play? Pretty much. And we got there considerably late. Oh, yeah. For, okay. for the... We got, what, three-ish? Yeah, we were in packs at... We had, like, three hours before the expo hall closed. Mm-hmm. And it was open from 10 a.m. Oh, yeah. So, in from three to six, we got to do just about everything we wanted to do. Which is not what PAX is usually like. No. I mean, it was nice. But it felt more on a scale that my expectations weren't expecting. Yeah, even when I went... So, I haven't been in years. Mm-hmm. But even when I went before it was, like, huge, it was, like, way more than what was there. Yeah. And obviously there's a lot to take into account here. Mm-hmm. Industry is changing rapidly with how these things are handled, with a lot of it, a lot of it just being digital now. Uh, I mean, just look at E3 and mm-hmm. what happened with that. Fucking dead. Um, there was no packs last year, and they came back with, like, pretty strong limitations. Yeah. That could have played a factor. Um. And just on top of that, this year there were no like, what the biggest, the biggest studio there was Gearbox. Yeah, and like that's they they've always been like a PAX thing, right? And even even being down like Texas focused, coming all the way up to Boston for PAX East, like right. PAX East specifically. Nothing against Gearbox. It's, I'm not gonna sit here and say like they're they're small. No, but they're not like you know we're not talking about like Microsoft, PlayStation, Nintendo. Like, yeah. That's, that's not what we're talking about here. Yeah. When I went, Nintendo had like a crazy booth. So I'm talking like years ago where you could just, they had people walking around with like 3DSs attached to them and you play the 3DS off of like their belts and it was weird. Weird. Yeah. Um, that, or maybe I'm mixing up something I saw in a video on E3. <laughs> Either way, N- Nintendo had a big presence and it was much more just like, it, the way the Expo Hall was laid out was, and again, 
this is COVID, so like it's understandable. Yeah. When we went, it was very spread out. Spread out. Literally half the entire show floor was just tables and tables for like people to sit down and like play like cards against each other, play magic, put do whatever yeah. board games. And then there were massive sections set up for like even small like competitions and just a whole section if you just wanted to bring your own PC and just sit and play. Yeah, which that I I, I didn't quite get that. Yeah. But, you know, to each their own. Yeah. Um but I remember years ago going and it was like I I am turning around every direction. It's mobbed with people and there's just games everywhere. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Every like I can't turn for I I can't walk for two seconds without finding another new game I want to play. Right. This was not really that. No. So it was. It's gonna be interesting to see what PAX is like next year, and the year after that, and the year after that. And see, like is is this kind of what PAX is now? Because it's like I you remember I got excited. I was like, oh shit, look, Bioware has something here. And then we walked closer. I was like, oh, it's Bioware gear. It's just Bioware gear, which their store was really weird. Yeah. You had to fill out a piece of paper. So they had just like a little stand mm-hmm. that showed everything they had in a picture. And you then had to go to a piece of paper and fill out with one of the pens they had there, like mark off what you want. And you give them that piece of paper. Then they go into like their whole tent situation and get it for you. Yeah. Which was interesting. Mm-hmm. It was the only place I was like that. Also, there was uh, another shop not far from it at all selling Mass Effect stuff that was, like, more interesting. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, it's, just... it's like, here's the name brand Mass Effect stuff that's super expensive. Uh-huh. And it's like, here's some cooler small stuff, like pins and shirts and whatnot. It's like, oh, that's that, cool. That look cooler, too. Like, just, you know. Even I got a Mass Effect pin because it was just fucking cool. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, it was a lot, lot of shops, which I, that's always been the case. And, you know, tabletop's always been a big part of PAX. Mm-hmm. Um, but let's talk about the games we did get to play. Starting with Asteragos, which I didn't realize. It's actually called Asteragos Curse of the Stars. Mm. Um, this was a, it was like a third-person action game from uh, Acme Game Studio. And at first, it was kind of mad to me. Mm-hmm. Like, it didn't feel too good. And, again, this is a, a caveat that we, a lot of these games are pre-release that we got to play early. And it it's always different when you're just thrown into, like, the middle of a game with no idea what you're doing and how to do it. Not even, like, really giving yourself the time to look at the little display of controls. It's just like, all right, I'm just going to sit down and play. Like, this is what I'm yeah, here to do. exactly. So, at first, I was like, I don't know what I'm doing. This doesn't feel too good. But then I started to get used to the combat. And then I fought this huge, like, alligator boss that was very Dark Mm Souls-like. And that whole boss was very, like, there's health flasks, and to drink a flask, it, like, it's a delay. It's not like you hit the button, your health goes up. It's just like a Dark Souls game where, like, you hit the button, and your character has to actually drink the flask. And if you get hit while trying to drink the flask, like, it cancels it out. Yeah. Like, it is that. Um, And it was hard, and it took every single one of my health flasks, and then... I did do it, even though I like we were both one hit at the end. I felt really good about that. Oh yeah. Um, and that moment there was kind of like, oh, yeah, I like this. Uh-huh. I like this now. Now that I know what it is, I like it. Um, I did. So they have you set up as like a, a magic wielding class. As I was looking into the game a little more, there's apparently a bunch of different classes you can be. Ooh. It's like all sorts of different styles uh, and ways to play the game. So I'm. Looking forward to this game now. It's coming out fall 2022. I will say I, I am interested in it. It looked it looked so much like Kenna, but like a much yeah. more interesting version. So yeah, yes. Mm-hmm. Also, Kenna also kind of had that Dark Souls thing going on, but did not advertise itself as that whatsoever. Nope, not even in the slightest. Here's a cute little Pixar movie. Uh, oh no. Oh wait, we're gonna get you to the first boss and make it really hard. It's like well. It looks nice. It does. It does look nice. Mm. Kenna does look nice. But yeah, it's it's Asteragos. It was a pleasant surprise, especially after my first initial reaction, and then it's kind of like, oh, uh, yeah, actually, mm. I like this. And that was in the the middle of this big, yeah, orange like circus pop up thing that they had themed going on, which was really cool. A whole bunch of little like sections that like they had a little claw machine. They had like a, a little like booth tent set up with like 
um, awnings out. It was just like a little like uh, like you'd walk up for like tickets or something like a cool little thing. All all themed really well. They had the uh, the like punching bag thing that you yeah. did where you have to like you punch it and try to see like how how hard you hit and like try to get the high score. Mm-hmm. It was. So this was the first area we came across, and honestly, it was probably the coolest. Yeah. It was, like, the most unique and coolest thing that was there. And we kept going back a few times just to, like, look around and yeah. see some more. It was it was a very cool spot. hmm To which, right next to it, uh, was uh, Rhythm Sprout. This also has... That's not the full name when I looked that one up, too. Are you serious? Rhythm Sprout. Sick Beats and Bad Sweets. That's, like, the <laughs> name, though. That's, like... it's. That's what it's under on Steam. Why? <laughs> and I thought Dying Light 2 Stay Human was fucking stupid. Rhythm Sprout, Sick Beats, and Bad Sweets. Like, all right. I remember <laughs> seeing this game a little bit before going to PAX and being like, all right, this looks like garbage. And then sitting there getting to play it, I'm like, you know what? This seems like the perfect game to just like be an in-between or like I just got done playing something. I was like, I feel like just like hopping in and just listening to some music. It was it was. Like it was one of those. Where it's like it's shit. But like, you know what? I'm excited for this. Yeah, it it's a pretty like when it comes down to it, it's a very simple rhythm game. Oh yeah. But sometimes you just something like that is just good. You know. Mm-hmm. So it, you you are this uh your ha- what was it half man half vegetable? Yep. Um, and you're you're going like away from the screen or well, does that make sense? Every so the away notes from the screen. So the notes are coming at you, and every single time it gets up to your character, you hit the corresponding button, and you take one step. So it's like the character stays where it is, and like the world is just walking underneath you as you yeah. continue. Yes. Yeah. Um. So that that's kind of like every note you hit, yes, yeah, one step. So like if you hit a flurry of notes, you're going to be moving real quick. Mm-hmm. If it's like a slow song, you're going to be kind of like very slowly walking along. Um. And then random dessert based enemies appear yeah they're no good um and they don't look good either they don't look good they're they're, it's nightmare fuel yeah um they don't it doesn't really change the gameplay itself it's still like one color is for the the face buttons on a controller one color is for the d-pad and then another color is for the shoulder buttons Mm -hmm. so it doesn't change at all except they become attacks and dodges and every time you land an attack which is one of the face buttons or the d-pad you do damage to this enemy. And then when they attack you, you have to hit the shoulder button. And that is like a dodge. So now there's like, they have hit points. You have hit points. And it's kind of like, you know, it's, it's an interesting dressing for the like, Hey, you keep missing these notes. You're going to fail. It's almost like a little random encounter. Yeah. So it, you know, again, it was not that challenging. It was not complicated whatsoever, but I liked it. Mm hmm. I liked. I mean, granted, I just need uh, if you put a rhythm game in front of me, I will probably like it. But I really liked this. My biggest issue with like ninety percent of the games of PAX was just how close you had to sit to the screen, which in something yeah. like a rhythm game makes it really difficult to focus <laughs> it can, yeah. about what notes coming up next. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you don't exactly get much choice in your setup at PAX. No, you just do whatever they have for you. Pretty much. Uh, we made our way to another another area after that. Where they, so, <laughs> why, why don't you talk about the game you played there? So, they had this little section set up where in, in front of this big, like, imagery banner, it was split into three separate uh, designs or three separate images, each corresponding to whatever game was sitting in front of it. And uh, continuing on the Souls path, I got to sit down and, well, actually, I stood there watching each of the TVs waiting for whichever one was going to be like count down Uh for the time for the demo the fastest and it was uh the last hero of nostalgia where you play as this little stick figure running around this really cool designed world with awesome design enemies that are like some are made of paper so they kind of like they're sitting down and they like curl up and like stand up to come get you there's some other cool enemies and it's basically like just like an old like i want to say it was like an old pc looking like PS1 style with like slightly better graphics, but that sort of that sort of energy about yeah, it. Yeah, I was gonna say it, ha- it it had that vibe. Yeah, and you're running around as this little stick figure with a few different classes, and it's just a little Dark Souls game. And mm-hmm. 
honestly, out of all the games I played, this one was, was the one that I kept thinking about the most. Like, I still am thinking about it. Which is weird with you and a Souls game. There's only so few that really get my attention. Something like Jedi Fallen Order, where I could play it on easy and just have a good time. Right. But this was just like, I don't know, I, I'm playing it, and I'm like, I'm fucking digging it. I'm digging it real well. They had the uh, a cool, like, they had that stick figure in, like, what, what would you call it? Not like a statue. It it was like a like a like a life size figure. It, yeah, it had like the bars connecting it because you're like a stick figure of like actual like you know how like on the old style computers where like you the cursor would go across. It, it's literally like a stick figure made of like the cursor if you were to like make a stick figure on a computer. Mm-hmm. So it, there's like pieces floating and they had like these bars connecting them. But he had like a little armor. He had a sword and a shield. And it was it was just a cool thing. Like you could take pictures with him, which I kind of wish we did. They had a little helmet there. Yeah, which like. It was clearly too small for our heads. It was oh, yeah. meant for like kids, but it was like it was it was cool. Yeah. Again, one of the more interesting things. And and the fact that I I went up against the boss twice, but I took him out on the second time, and it's like oh, it felt good. Um, yeah. Oh yeah. It's just like the way too of like that specific boss's um like combat pattern. I was like, you know what? Yeah, I like this. Mm-hmm. This is good. Like it feels good, and it's like. It feels it feels fair for someone who sucks at these games. <laughs> okay, that's yeah. good. At least that boss did. Yeah, and he was cool too. Like I, I, I really like the way that they went about him. And then just looking into the Steam page and seeing what else they had, I was like, oh, if that looks like a cool boss. I was like, oh, mm-hmm. I want to do this. I, I'm excited for this game. I want to. Did it have it. a release date? Do you know? Sometime 2022. Okay, that that's gonna be a lot of these games. Uh, right next to to. Sorry, what was it? Lost Hero of Nostalgia? Last. Last. My next to Last Hero of Nostalgia was Curse to Golf, which I have talked about this game on the show before. Um, This one was interesting. Yeah. Because I'm excited for this game, and by no means do I think it was bad. Like, from what I played, like, it was good. I liked, I liked golf games. It was bad situationally. Yes. It was not good for, like, a PAX showing. Yeah. Especially the way they had it set up where... You are literally just, like, playing the intro of the game, which I know that this might kind of contradict how I was saying, like, oh, there's no tutorial, so I don't really know what I'm doing. This, this is, is too like, much tutorial. It was, like, a lot of talking, and the dialogue is, like, witty and humorous, and again, I'm not saying it was bad, but I'm at PAX where other people are waiting to play these games. Granted, on you, Thursday, there wasn't a lot of people waiting, but there still. There wasn't, but it's still, it's, it's a much different thing thing than like oh i'm sitting at home and playing a game it's like yeah there's all these people around this is not just for me this is not my thing you know like there were numerous times where we're like we knew the people behind us and like we played a a, a certain amount of a demo yeah and it was like all right here you go take it like you right. play like yeah. we will move on because you don't know you don't want to be that guy and no you don't want to be a dick there no. are a few dicks there yeah there are a few dicks yeah um <laughs> <laughs> but uh it it just it, it's also because once you're out of the tutorial, it is a time demo. Mm-hmm. It's like, all right, this dude is still talking. Stop! I want to just do the gameplay. Skip, 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 skip. It skip. was a lot of skipping. Once I did get to gameplay, I did really enjoy it. It's, yeah. It is a a cool spin on golf, like maybe like a top spin. Yeah. <laughs> um, it so it's it to all two D, mm-hmm. and you're kind of like as you're going through a level, you start with four or five strokes that you have and every time you hit the ball it's one stroke and if you run out of strokes you lose Mm. you can get more by like destroying these statues along the way but the more interesting thing is the uh like the card abilities Mm. and some of them are like real basics like oh add an extra stroke or like you can use this as a practice shot or you can destroy tnt that's around you but then there's more interesting ones which is like change the ball mid like mid hit, like change the direction of the ball mid hit. Trajectory. Trajectory, yes. So that was like probably my key moment from the game is when I had to shoot the ball down into this ditch where the hole was. And as it was bouncing off a wall, it was going the wrong direction. And then I used the card and made it go right to the direction of the hole and it went right in. It was like, all right, you know what? Yeah. That's good. I like that. So I am still pretty excited for Curse to Golf. It plays good, but. And again, I like the writing. It, it was not that it was bad, but it was like, not not right now. I will say the not ima- at PAX. The amount of times I was trying to record video of gameplay, and then I would stop the video, delete it, and I'd just be like, all right, I'll wait till there's actual gameplay. Uh huh. 
I'm like, it, all right, here's 30 seconds of just Dylan clicking through and reading. I'm just like, who the fuck wants to see this? Right. I don't want to see this. And there, there was some sort of like, you're on a golf cart and you can kind of choose what level you wanted to go to. But again, it was like, I'm, I, you look at this countdown timer in the top right corner. I'm like, I'm just going to rush through this. I don't know where I'm going to put, give me to any level. I just want to go in. Yep. So I'm not entirely sure how that system works as of right now. And again, you could be that guy that sits there. It's like, I'm going to replay the demo now. We could have done that. Hopping but, back on the ride. But we're not doing that. No. We're not doing that. Um, Yeah. After that was my highlight. Mm-hmm. WrestleQuest. Yup. Uh, if you remember a few weeks ago that ID at Xbox event, I was gushing about it. And I got to play it. And it's really good. <laughs> From a is, from a viewer standpoint behind you, I was like, you know what, this is kind of cool. Yeah, it it definitely, you know, if you're a wrestling fan, it, it covers a lot of the wrestling shit you expect in a good way. And some of the stuff you don't expect in a really cool way. Mm-hmm. First off, they have the licensing to a lot of characters. Or, I say characters. Well, they're, they're characters. Yeah. A lot of wrestlers, um, including like... Booker T, Andre the Giant, uh, Jake the Snake, uh, uh, Jeff Jarrett, who was there. If anyone's a fan of Jeff Jarrett, I was standing like four feet away from him when he was on Twitter. Yeah, he was just there, hanging out. He was there on Friday, too. Yeah. Um, but it was... Okay. It It's a turn-based RPG wrestling game. And they have all the rights to these wrestlers that are like in the game, and... There were even more that they showed off there that was like, oh, so you guys have this too? And they were like, we have a lot of wrestlers. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Which means that, like, they really, like, they invested in this game. Because, like, I mean, I don't know how much it costs to use the licensing of, like, Andre the Giant. Yeah. But it can't be the cheapest, right? No. Like, it just can't. So, you know, very interesting to see them investing all this into it. And the way combat works, at least from what I played... Well, first of all, I was going the complete wrong direction. The dev had to be like, "Uh, no, no, so you're going to want to go back to the gym? I was like, oh. And it was really funny, too, because he's dressed up in full, like, wrestling garb. (laughs) He's got, like, black eye makeup on and a cape and stuff. And he goes, oh, you just go back. You're just going to want to go left. Yeah. (laughs) Um, So I fucked that up. Uh, And you get in the ring. And when you're in combat, apparently there's combat out of the ring. This is how it works in the ring. It is turn-based, so you choose, like, uh, you know, whatever move you want to do, you hit them, and then they bounce back off the ropes behind them, which lets you get a follow-up by hitting the correct button prompt that comes up. And if you don't hit the correct button prompt, they kind of, like, do a little counterattack. Very back and forth in the way wrestling works, which is why I think turn base actually works really well for wrestling mm. like this, because wrestling matches, good ones, are very back and forth. Um, One of the coolest things, I thought, was... The way you finish a fight when you're in the ring. Which, it's not just like, you knock out their health, and like, that's it. Once you do enough damage, or once you like you do weaken them, you can choose to pin them. And then it becomes like this little mini game of, you know, the typical, here's this arrow moving back and forth, and here's this one spot you gotta get the arrow in moving back and forth, so you have to hit the button at the right time. You have ten seconds, so you have to do it three times, so you know, one, two, three, like in wrestling. Mm -hmm. And every time you miss, it'll make that counter go down quicker. So they're more likely to kick out. But then every time you keep pinning them, they become like kind of weaker and weaker as it works in wrestling. So it's very like cool in that sense. Mm -hmm. There are like side quests you can get. So I'm interested to see what that is actually like, like writing wise. Um, They do say that they address things like kayfabe and like when you play a WWE game, it's like, all right, th- wrestling is real. You play this game and they're like, we know it's it's like choreographed in a way. And like, we know there's stories written here. They're not shy about that. Mm-hmm. Um, but they're having fun with it. Exactly. Which is like, that's kind of what you want. Mm-hmm. And it was very cool. So this was like, was this the only time we actually got to like talk to a dev? <sighs> Technically. Okay. Or at least, or at least on a game that we that we, one of us actually played. Right. Uh, it. He the you could tell how like passionate they were about wrestling. He was into it, mm-hmm. and they were saying like when they got the rights to Andre the Giant, and his estate was telling them like, oh, he would have loved this game. He'd be really on board. This is really cool that like 
apparently the office that was like a huge day for them yeah it's just it's it it it's heartwarming yeah it seems like very much so a passion project and you just you, you love to see it mm-hmm. and i'm a wrestling guy and i'm not you're not but i am and it's cool to see feels like there's like a wrestling renaissance happening right before our eyes your eyes right before my eyes <laughs> But yeah, this this was my highlight of all the games we played. You're oh no, I'm still next. No wait, you were next. What's that? What's that game you played that that's been out for like a year? Fucking exophobia. Yeah. <laughs> we go over to this other <laughs> section, and they have these little separate booths like set up where you just walk up, and they have like on like they're all displayed for like all right this is the game and like they're all next to each other there's a separate mm-hmm. game and whatnot and i walk up and i start playing exophobia that kind of look like a sci-fi original doom in a way um, i'm playing mouse and keyboard i'm walking around i'm like what the fuck am i doing what am i hit where am i going what's going on here and ow oh fuck just got a random sharp pain oh i thought that was part of whatever you were doing with <laughs> no anyway <laughs> So I'm playing and I'm going back and forth. I'm like, what the fuck am I doing? I don't. I have no idea what's happening. I'm I'm listening to the to the to the music. I'm taking out enemies every once in a while. I have this one pistol. Uh, I'm taking shots. I can charge it up and do like a big powerful attack that can like knock doors down and like make other uh, other areas go through. Take out like big enemies. And I get up to the to the boss or whatever, and I'm like, I have no idea what I'm doing. And also, mouse and keyboard, my my movement skills are not are not there. Mm-hmm. So I'm like trying to slide, I'm trying to like avoid, and I'm trying to turn around fast, get some shots. I'm like, he's blocking. I'm taking out. I'm, I'm getting hit. I'm like, I'm, I'm I'm gonna die. And then right as I go to die, and the boss has like one health tick down, the game just fucking crashes. <laughs> yeah. And all I'm looking at is like the white the white box of like Mm -hmm. code problems. And I take the, I take the headset off and I'm like, well, I'm just going to walk away from that. And then you were like, yeah, that game's been out. I'm like, why the fuck did I even (laughs) waste my, why didn't you like lift the ear cup off of me and be like, this game's been out. I would have dropped it right then and there and walked away. (laughs) Well, it made for a good experience. Yeah. It was definitely an interesting experience. Yeah. I mean, especially watching something crash just for fun. Uh Uh-huh. Well, it was like, why is, why was that set up, like, next to games that aren't out? Like, that felt weird. Yeah. You know? Like, I get when a game's popular, or if, like... Like, they had a whole Dead Cells, like, style section and whatnot. Yeah. But it's like, if a game has stuff coming out, or, like, they're adding on to it and they're mm-hmm. doing more... But this is just a fucking game. Yeah, like, with Dead Cells, too, like, I think they were running, like, speedrun tournaments or stuff, and, like... Yeah. Like, they were doing fun stuff, but it was clearly... It wasn't, like... You know? Yeah, it wasn't like, you know. hey, here's a game that just everyone knows. You could just yeah. play it if you want. Yep. Something to do. Right next to Exophobia was The Courier, which I... <sighs> All right. This is going to be one of the two games we talk about where I really got to say, this game is not out yet. Yeah. They are still working on this game. With that being said, this game needs work. Mm-hmm. Um, the whole thing is supposed to be like an open world... Uh, mail delivery game you're the mailman riding around your bike delivering letters and doing random other activities like according to the trailer you'll just you can just mow someone's lawn Mm. and like i don't know what to call those types of games but games with like a bunch of mini games within it i like that just random sims yeah like it 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 becomes weirdly immersive for me in a way Mm -hmm. so i was excited for this to try to check it out um it all right first off controlling the bike is bad like there's no other way to put it it's not easy to control yeah you crash into things constantly uh this was maybe a pack thing or like a demo situational thing i had no idea where to go mm-hmm. or what i was doing and i was trying to go back I, I think i was going the wrong way there was an airplane on like the end of this dock and trying to ride across that dock on your bike was not happening no it was like getting very stuck in there and then you would fall and just it was not good uh kept crashing the bike at one point i couldn't get the bike back because it crashed like what was it into a rock or something or well there was one part where you went up to go to a mailbox right yeah you parked your bike next to and both the 
uh, interact button for the mailbox and the bike would pop up next to each other. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't help, too, that there was a rock that was placed. Right. And with the the way the camera worked, the rock was completely covering both you, the mailbox, and the bike. But you could see the silhouettes of the shadows through. And you had to hop back on your bike, move out of the way. And it was in one of those where you had to stand in the just pixel perfect yeah. spot to get the prompt yep. to come up to even open the mailbox. And then not too long after that, went to the post office, mm-hmm. leave the post office. And I guess the position I parked my bike was not good because every time, I t- every time, I don't know what I just said. Every time I tried to get back on the bike, the character would just like slowly teleport across the way. And it happened multiple times, so I tried to get back on that bike. It was stuck up against, like, the railing of, like, the front porch of the mm-hmm. post office. So every time you walked up, it just whooshed and just, like, floated away. Yeah. And it, it was like, all right, they, this game's not done. It's yeah. just not. Um, That does have a fall 2022 release date. We'll see. Like, it, it is a smaller scope game, so obviously, like, it won't take as much work. Mm-hmm. To clean a lot of this up. I'm not writing the game off just yet, but, you know, it was not a great first impression. Um, Right after that, that's when I played Elements, right? I think so. This is the second game with the caveat of, all right, this game says that this game's not going to be out till 2023. Thank so God, this was very early and they did have a message on the thing saying like, hey, this is a very early build of the game. Like, thank you for taking your time to check this one out. But hey, we're working on it. Of any of the games that had no lines and just open chairs. Yeah, it was pretty much open the whole time. And granted, like, we were not in an area of like, oh, these games are well known by any means. Mm-hmm. But uh, elements in the trailers looks cool. It just does. And playing the build that they had it was uh, all right so it's, it's a third person like you play as two siblings or one of two siblings and you're this like magic wielder and sword fighter person so it starts out with like a few chests right in front of you it's like hey open up these chests get some uh elemental stuff you open up the chest and every single one you can't pick up the loot until you have, like the chest disappears because of the way like the clipping is which is not the end of the world, but again, like, okay, that's problem number one. Then all of a sudden, I find a way to make a dinosaur steed appear, like this mount, and it's just a dinosaur. Mm-hmm. With uh, again, <laughs> this is a this game's not out, and there was no tutorial. It was very like, oh, okay, there's a dinosaur now. I guess <laughs> like yeah. that came out of nowhere. Um, so I rode that around, and I, I did fight some enemies, and the combat felt fine. Uh, and then I find these, like, magic spells to equip, which is kind of like the introduction to magic. Mm-hmm. So I ride up to it on my dinosaur. I try to get off the dinosaur. The dinosaur disappears, but my character is still just floating in the air as if they're on the mount, and I can't get off of it. Yeah. And then, like, one of the people working there has come over back, uh, yeah, this happens, and then, like, go on the PC, quit out of the game, reopen the game, and I was like, all right. It... <sighs> I think it's an interesting discussion when, like, I know you want to get these game, like, you want to get the name out there, right? Yeah. Like, there, this is a game that you know, no one who's talking about elements, like, not me. No, I don't think many people are. No. So, like, I get it. You want to get it out there in front of a large crowd of people, but it, it must be a weird balance of like, all right, this game is clearly not done. Like, this is a very early build. So again, I'm not writing it off. But you have to imagine a lot of people played that and were like, I'm never playing this again. It it, like, it it was literally like, here's a sandbox. That's it. Yeah, pretty much. And like, well, again, we'll see the finished product in 2023. That's a long time. That could be over a year from now. Yeah. A lot can change with that game. I'm sure it will. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I don't want to take away anything from the work that people have done on these games. But... Again, it it must be a weird balance of like wanting to get your game out there, but also maybe it was too early. Yeah, maybe it was too soon. Maybe you shoot for like a fall twenty twenty three release, and it's at next year's PAX. Yeah, and then you can have a better showing. So like, 
it was not a good showing. There was literally, uh, while I was standing in another line later that day, there, there was this parents walking with their kid. And they're like, oh, yeah, here's Elements. It's like, oh, well, hopefully it's not that bad and whatnot. And they're walking up, and there's two open chairs. And they're like, hey, is this – where's the line? And uh-huh. it's like, no, go for it. It's like, oh, look, yay, exciting. And I'm just like <laughs> – it, 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 It's not necessarily the best sign at PAX when it's just like, yeah, this game's just open. Yeah. Granted, like we said, it wasn't too crowded, especially on Thursday. But still everywhere else, we still had to wait on like a little bit of a line at least. Yeah. Uh, after Elements, we, I think that's when we went to Trek Yomi. Oh, Trek 2 Yomi, sorry. Trek 2 Yomi, the first time. The first time. And, yeah, and then, uh, we were, like, next online, and this dude who I think was working there. Yeah. Was like, hey, if you go over to the other station, there's, like, no wait over there. Like, you'll be able to get on quicker. We're like, okay. And then it kind of, it took us, like, a merch line on one side, and then the other side, which was maybe... For the game had like an even longer line and it like it spread into like the middle of the area yeah and people just kind of made their own line so we just kind of waited there and we're like all right let's go do anything else yeah i don't remember where we went after that <laughs> neither do i think we just started walking around and just looking at things okay i guess let's talk about truck to because we did go back and play truck we went back and waited in the same area that we initially waited in until yeah. it was our turn yep truck to yomi it was, again, maybe not the best game to just jump in with no tutorial. Yeah, I must have spent a good 30, 40 seconds just staring at the little cue card of, like, what the buttons did. And even yeah. then, I'm just like, all right, I just I just got to play it and, like, figure it out that way. Yeah, which, so, it is not meant to be, like, the easiest game in the world. Mm-hmm. Uh, it is, like, a lot of the enemies are one hit and you're just a few hits and, like, that's it. But when you're watching gameplay and, like, you're watching a trailer, it doesn't necessarily sh- tell you how it'll feel. No, it doesn't. No. Um, first off, style-wise, it's, it's very cool. It's very based off the, uh, what, what's the dude's name? Uh, Kurosawa? Yes. It, it is very that. It's, like, it is mostly, like, black and white. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, it, it's also, it, it plays on perspective a little bit. It is quote unquote, like side scroller 2d, but there is some like verticality yeah. of like, you can kind of move forwards, like further in and then kind of towards the screen or like the camera move, perspective will change and like you'll yeah. move forward and like hop over something and the camera will turn around again. You're in a new like left to right area. Yep. Um, it is very much so like a timing based game. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Like, you want to really try and parry. Uh, it felt... Stiff. Yeah. that Yeah, exactly what I was going to say. Stiff. Um, which, again, we didn't play through the tutorial, so we were not exactly experts on how exactly you were supposed to play. And again, going back on, like, what a game looks like it feels like versus what yeah. it actually does, it looked like it would have been a lot smoother. Yes. Not Not an actual, like... Not, like, actual, like... It, it has problems... But it's like, oh, I wasn't expecting it to be, like, so stark with, like, the stopping or, like, the, the, the movements itself. Right. It Yeah. When we say, like, sti- it's not like the game was broken. No. But it was very much like, okay, you're one-on-one with an enemy and is very, like, deliberate. And, yeah. like, you hit this one button, it's going to do this thing, like, that. that's, like, that's it. It does that thing. Mm-hmm. And it, yeah, it didn't feel like you can, like, chain together a good combo, really, or, like. No. It was like, you hit the button, it's one hit. You hope it lands. It's like the, it's like the most real time turn based feeling, kind of yeah. Um, but I still like I enjoyed it. Oh yeah, what we got to play. Um, yeah, we we didn't stick around too long with that. No, that was that was one of those where it's like, all right, here you want the controller, your turn, you go. Yeah, Trek to Yomi seemed to have like the most consistent line with yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, after Trek to Yomi, I believe. That was when... Is that when we did Turbo Overkill? Possibly. I think so, because Truck T.O.M. was one of the last things we did. Hmm. Turbo Overkill. This game's out now. Yeah, it was... I remember standing in the line and then seeing someone finish and then saying, like, oh, the game will be releasing April 22nd. And it was April 21st. And I was like, Uh 
it, it was another one of those moments where it's like, why am I going to wait in a line for a game yeah. that comes out tomorrow? But it you, was cool. It was. I mean, we got a chance to try it for free and see if we like it. Exactly. We both did like it. Uh, very much. It, it's kind of mixing Ghost Runner and like an old Doom game. Like Quake or, you know. In like the visual and like fe- vibe style of like Far Cry Blood Dragon. Yes. And it just, it works. It is very fast paced. Uh, it is not, I don't know about, yeah, we both went on normal. Yeah. Um, I was dying quite a bit. Yeah. It It's not the easiest, but if it, it just felt really good. It did. Very smooth. Um, so I probably not this week cause there's some other stuff that's coming out this week that I'm extremely excited for, but I want to play this soon. So do I. It was I li- cool. I like the vibe of just like the gruff, like I'm the guy. Yeah. And it's like fuck you and I'm a cybernetic dude and there's just a whole bunch of cool aspects to it. Uh-huh. You have like a, a cool like chainsaw just straight up comes out of your leg. And you're doing like a slide, you're doing uh-huh. like the chainsaw slide, you can just go right into him and like cut up a bunch of enemies, do some damage, turn around, jump, shoot them. It's just it all the movement, it all feels so fluid and good. Yeah, it it just worked. And it like you didn't it, it wasn't complicated to play. No. You can jump into it. It's like, okay, it, these all these buttons are doing exactly what I expect. Let's just do it. Yeah. It just worked. Granted, I would have much rather had a controller. I would have rather a controller too, but beggars can't be choosers. It does remind me of when I played the demo for Ghost Runner before it came out, and I was playing on PC, and I said, I don't give a fuck if I'm playing on mouse and keyboard. This is just fun. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I only have one more game that we played. I think that's right. Valley of Shadows. Yes, Valley of Shadows. That was the one that I wanted to play. It looked really cool. Well, yeah. it it seemed very interesting. Yes, it is. This is a weird type of game to just like play a little snippet of. It's an autobiographical puzzle game. Yes, and it is uh, puzzly in the... Uh, you made this comparison, which is very good, like Numa Breath of Life. Yes. Where a lot of it is perspective-based. Which is cool. I wonder how much this is going to, like, vary throughout the game. Throughout the little bit I played, it was very much so, like, you have this staff, and you hit this button to emanate this light from it, and you have to have, like... There's, like, these nodes on the wall that can see the light, and some nodes are not allowed to see the light. No, they don't want the light. So you need to, in just with your perspective, kind of line up all the nodes that want to see the light and make sure the nodes that don't want to see the light are covered up. Um, and it was like, I, I dig these types of games again. If it's like five hours of just that light puzzle, that's a little like, all right, yeah, too much. Uh, but I would like to think they have some variation in there. It's also like part spooky walking sim. Yeah. Mystery type deal. You're finding all sorts of little things about, it was like your uncle or something. And so I assume that's where the autobiographical part comes in. Uh, that is not out until 2023. So we got we got a ways for that, but that that one was cool. It looked really cool. That's everything we played at PAX. There really wasn't a lot. A lot of it was indie, and because of that, it, it can be very hit or miss based yeah. on like your interests. So there was only so much that I really played. Mm-hmm. But it was still just such an awesome experience to be there. Oh yeah, and we spent a lot of money on Friday. Oh yeah, we did. There were a lot of shops. Yeah, which I mean, with how little people ended up showing up it's like all right this is a nice little although they they things are expensive and they have cool shit uh-huh yeah it if, if we had unlimited money we would have came home with a lot of stuff oh my god the amount so of things much. i wish i could just go back in time and get uh-huh uh yeah look check look out for our videos on our youtube offshore gamescast youtube uh just for you know more visuals, like I said, of the games we play, but also a, a kind of behind-the-scenes travel vlog mm-hmm. of us just farting around, going there, and then coming home and being there. It was a good time. It was a good time. It was quick. I, w- I wish we were in a situation where we could have stayed long and not have to, like, felt very rushed, you know? Yeah, both days. Yeah, it, it felt like we spent just as much time traveling as we did at PAX, mm-hmm. which can be tiring. Oh, yeah. You want to take the first news story? Sure. So, 
if anyone remembers the rumor of Ubisoft coming out with yet another garbage fucking online game. So it's... like the seven of those from the last two weeks? Yep. <laughs> it's true. Ubi no... <sighs> Fuck. Damn it. <laughs> Ubi no. Ubisoft has announced Project Q, a new t- a team-based battle arena game with a few PvP modes that brings in some battle royale elements, but not. it's not really a battle royale. It's just another flop from Ubisoft before it's even out the fucking door. Yeah, there's a yeah. If it even leaves the door. Uh huh. We'll we'll see. But it's like, uh, stop. They don't learn their lesson. No, they just don't. Like, sure, this will not be part of their quartz bullshit, but it might as well be. <laughs> it's just more bullshit. <laughs> it is bullshit. Um, this so this is not gonna be a game we care about, but it has an interesting aspect to it, which is uh. F1 22. Mm. That got a release date uh, July 1st. But the part that I thought was interesting was the VR support on PC with the Vive and Rift. That is awesome. What, like, is this a thing? I hope this. Oh, whoops. <laughs> I hope this is a thing that games start to do more of. Mm-hmm. Which is like <clears throat> having a VR m- kind of mode attached to it. Dude, do that in any flight game or like like a space game. Does Microsoft Flight Simulator have VR? I'm not positive, but I, I could totally see it. It feels like it should, right? Like, how fucking cool would that be? Yeah, there's there, you could go a lot of different directions by, like, having a VR attachment to a game. One of my f- absolute favorite things from Elite Dangerous, which I don't play too often, is that you could just click the right stick, which just gives you free head movement, and you just look around the cockpit. That's cool. It is. And, like, you can look at, like, a certain area and, like, a display will pop up and, like, your reticle will be, like, where you look is, like, what you're looking at. So, like, mm-hmm. you'll look at, like, the different things. You hit the button on whatever you're looking at. That shit is, like, yeah. so small, but it's, like, that 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 immersion is, like, please. It, it really is typically the smallest of things that add such immersion to games. Mm-hmm. You know? Little details like that. Yeah. Uh, going back to Ubisoft... Oh, we're back? Uh, apparently, there are multiple companies currently eyeing them uh, to acquire. Mm-hmm. And Ubisoft seems to be open about it. Both companies that are, are, are the big ones are both investment companies. One is Blackstone, uh, uh, a real estate investment company, and KKR, another investment company. Although KKR is the only one who has done I- I- investing in the past, uh, apparently throwing money into Epic. About like okay. either one point two billion or something like That's that. That's a lot of money. Them. Oh yeah. So they either of them have a, a pretty good chance of doing it, and if so, please just buy them and fucking fix their issues. You remember I was talking with someone about this the other day. When like this this started to come out. Yeah. Remember years ago when Ubisoft was potentially gonna be uh acquired like this? I don't remember who it was. No. This this so this was years ago. They were gonna be acquired, and it was like a they like really fought against it, and everyone was like, "Don't let them be acquired," mm-hmm. and they weren't. And then they it was like they made it was like a celebration for like, yeah, Ubisoft stay, like wasn't acquired, they're still them. And now it's like years later, it's like fucking someone acquire them, please. They need help, like they, fix them. God, it's just funny. I'm like. Years ago, everyone thought it was a bad thing, and now looking back, it's like maybe, maybe, maybe someone it else should have been. be in charge here. Yeah, just interesting what a what just a few years can, you know, how different it can be. Yeah, fucking gaming society changing, mm-hmm. turning worse. Uh, Gearbox Publishing announced the game. Eyes in the oh, it's a, sorry, eyes in the dark. The curious case of one Victoria Bloom. Mm-hmm. Uh, it is kind of like a it's a black and white 2D action platformer roguelite. Uh, they do a lot of the like uh, using your flashlight to like light up the area to like, go against monsters that way. Mm-hmm. Uh, it didn't seem like my cup of tea personally, uh, but it comes out July 14th for only 14.99. It looked interesting, but also <clears throat> not necessarily uh, up my lane. Yeah, not me either. Uh, but Gearbox also announced another game. Holy shit. It, are are you going to say that maybe this one's up your lane a little bit? Oh, yeah, it is. 
we are getting a new Tales from the Borderlands game, apparently with new characters and everything, and I could not be more excited. That first Tales game was incredible. It's coming this year. And it's coming this year. Holy yeah. shit. Two Borderlands games in one year? That's exciting. Yeah. <laughs> and especially Tales. Tales is just so... I miss that so much. The mm-hmm. Telltale had a great run. They had, like, the Guardians game, both seasons of Batman, fucking uh, Tales. It's just like, oh, holy shit. And now just more Tales. I cannot wait. Never enough Tales. Never enough. Miles Prower. It's going fast. He does. Yeah. Splatoon 3. That got a release date. Oh, yeah? September 9th this year. Hmm. I'm not going to pay 60 or $70. It's, it's, I don't think they've got up to 70 mm-hmm. uh, I'm not going to pay $60 for this game. I only care about the campaign. Yep. I'll get it when it's on sale. Yeah. The I really enjoyed the, the campaign of Splatoon 2, but I didn't, and I wouldn't have spent $60 on that. Mm-hmm. They're like fun addition i i know people really like the multiplayer it's just not for me campaigns are cool we got a release date for another game diablo immortal is finally coming out and it's coming out to mobile and pc yeah that was a, li- a little surprise in there fucking thank god for yeah. anyone who has any interest in that game <laughs> uh-huh that'll be coming out june 2nd very soon mm-hmm. it's essentially like a month away uh there was another game announced did you see the game ardo a R T O Arto? No. Uh so this is like it it's an action RPG. Um it it's open world and they said it's gonna be like narrative driven with multiple paths you can take with different endings. Uh the thing that really stood out to me was that it's one of those games where it's an all black and white world mm-hmm. and as you navigate through the open world, wherever you're going, there's like a sphere around you and the world like kind of gets painted in. And, like, colored it. And it had a very, like, as you fill things up, it it can get, like, very colorful and bright. And I'm just kind of a sucker for those type of things. Like, it's why I like, like, Power Wash Simulator. Right. Give me something that's, like, bland or dirty or messed up. And as I go through, it becomes bright and nice and colorful. It's like, I I like that. There's a satisfaction to that that I really enjoy. The gunk. The gunk. Yeah, well... That's what I wanted the gunk to be more like. Yeah. There wasn't... I mean, I liked the gunk. It I'm was good. I'm telling you, you gotta play the one DLC expansion for Metro Exodus where you're only going around clearing yeah, cobwebs and goop and shit. That sounds wonderful. I hated it. <laughs> it's the worst fucking two and a half hours I spent in Metro. But uh, there there was no release date attached to it, but I thought Arto looks really, looked really cool. That sounds interesting. Yeah. Uh... Speaking of games, <laughs> <laughs> the best transition. What a segue! Uh, so the release of Sherlock Holmes Chapter One for Xbox has been delayed indefinitely. Uh oh, due to I... the current ongoing war. Oh, so their okay. whole focus has switched over to the PlayStation version, still looking to come out on the twenty eighth of April, but no news and. Who knows what's going to happen with the Xbox version, depending on how long situations continue and, like, where they're able to put support and effort. Sure. So. I mean, understandable. It is. It's a shitty situation. What are you going to do? Exactly. Like, what are you going to do? Survive. Exactly. Uh, PlayStation Plus. The new PlayStation Plus it looks like we got some release dates for when that's launching. Uh, it's going to be throughout June for different different regions and they playstation it was like on their blog where they're saying like these are their target dates so they might not be exactly right but it's gonna be around there uh for us in the americas uh june 13th 2022 is when their whole new subscription service starts so less than two months just a little over a month we'll see if it's worth it yeah it'll be interesting uh chris pratt's been delayed no not Chris Pratt himself. So the Chris Pratt Mario movie has been delayed into 2023. Still enough time to I... get Chris Pratt out of it. <laughs> or add I'm... someone else more bonkers to like another random character. I'm so cu- like it is what they're doing is stupid. But on the other hand, 
I like I I need to see just what this wait is until that real first trailer drops. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Like I need to see what this is. Come on. Mario, man. Yeah, like, what? <laughs> I need to see that. I know. <laughs> like, it's so stupid. You know, save the princess so many times. <laughs> Plumber. Just. Come on, man. Uh, it's so wrong. <laughs> it's me, Mario. <laughs> Just. Uh, I don't like how accurate you are with that. <laughs> I don't like it. I'm sorry. It's too accurate. Uh, Baldur's Gate 3 got a full release window. Mm-hmm. As in 2023. Okay. Uh, that's when it will be leaving early access. I think they were targeting 2022 at some point, mm-hmm. but it got pushed 2023. Okay. Um, things that will be out by the end of this year. Apparently, Netflix is planning on having at least 50 games on their service by the end of the year. That's a decent amount of games. It is. But uh, also, with the games that they've released already, what... How far, how expansive are these games going to be besides just mobile ports or right. whatever basic That's the thing. sort of thing that they have? If, they, if they're going to make an impact with Netflix games, they need to have like a big type of game on there that's like only on there. You know right. what I mean? I mean they, they have like their, their little interactive like Bandersnatch type things, which is like the, the beginning of it. But now yeah. we're, we're almost like... I, not necessarily regressing, but it's like here's some just some basic mobile games, or like here's a port of something that you've already that's already been yeah. out. Like, what will they have, and like mm-hmm. what will they have associated with their licenses and properties? We'll see. Mm-hmm. Bring back Buddy Thunderstruck, you fucking assholes, uh, and not in the way of the Bandersnatch style. I don't know what you're saying. It was, it, they came out with one season of this puppet show, and it was good. Mm, okay. It sounds more childlike. Than yeah, that. it sounds very childlike. It's like a stop motion of like these puppets. You get like a a, a weasel and um, a dog, and it's like the whole place of animals. And they, he he races trucks. <laughs> it's such a good fucking. It sounds show. more childlike than it is. Okay, so you have a weasel and a dog in this place of animals, and they drive a truck, and they're like <laughs> southern in this small town. I wanna. It's. I could rewatch that season over. I love Buddy Thunderstruck. I have a fucking Buddy Thunderstruck plush sitting on my bed. He's legendary. <laughs> You'll find his picture in the dictionary. That's it, just in the dictionary. I was going. I was going down I, the lyrics. Oh, okay. Uh, Buddy Thunderstruck is legendary. You'll find his picture under "awesome" in the dictionary. That's what it is. Speaking of awesome, Buddy Thunderstruck. Buddy Thunderstruck. Uh, Modern Warfare 2 seems like we're going to be getting something like some sort of reveal inevitably with it. Uh, have you been to Infinity Ward's Twitter recently? I have not, but I did look into it. All of their social media has gone dark. Yeah. So just like their profile picture is just like, it's just black darkness. Uh, and their banner picture is mostly just black darkness, but there's like one little spot that's like, huh? What is that? So people brightened up the picture, and mm-hmm. it's ghost. Yep. So, like, it. everyone knows. What, I mean, it's been rumored for, like, everyone already knew what this was. It's but been this unofficially is like, official since it, it's been out. Right. So, like, it is still technically not official, but, like, this is the most unofficially official it can be. Yeah. So I, I, I'd imagine with them changing that that we're going to be getting some sort of news or in uh, Warzone. Uh, yeah, something That's how soon. they announce CODs now. It is, yeah. But I don't know. I, I don't have any other news. I got one last thing. All right. Uh, apparently, 2K is looking into making a competitor to Rocket League. Hmm. So there have definitely been some fakes that have come out to like on mobile and whatnot to just like yeah. try to match up with it. But there's been no like big budget actual like something that could go against it. So... My thought process is, wait till this comes out, and then just the slew of other copies that will inevitably show up in, like, the next three years, yeah. and, like, turn into, like, this will be the new Souls, this will be the new Battle Royale, this will be the new... Blah, 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 blah. And, oh, the... Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. I, what, it, what is a Rocket League competitor if it's not just... More, more Rocket League. Yeah, because, like, Rocket League is such a unique thing. Yeah. Like, 
And they, how else are you going to do cars and soccer? They've already like innovated on it in other ways of like yeah. making like all right, here's basketball. Like you got to do it like this. It's like yeah, what? Yeah, what? Wh- what? What does this mean? I don't know. Rocket League with cars with three wheels. I don't know. <laughs> Rocket League what? With, with rockets. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe the ball is the car and the car are the balls. That's not. You can't do that. I don't know. You can't do that. I don't know. There are, are some notable game releases. Oh, yeah, there are. There's some very notable ones. You want to take the first one? You know I do. I know you do. The Isle of Big Snacks. And? And Bug Snacks. There you go. Uh, So Bug Snacks coming out on, is it just Xbox or is it also coming out on Switch? Just uh, Xbox? So it will be coming out on um, fully PC, Xbox, and Switch for the new Right. Yeah. Uh, it's also going to be on Game Pass, right? Yes. So, yeah. If you have not played Bug Snacks, this is such a good chance. Play Bug Snacks. If you have played Bug Snacks, Isle of Big Snacks is a free DLC, and there's Big Snacks, and they're adding, like, you're going to have your own hut in the village now, just for you, and you can decorate it and customize it, and you can upgrade it to a second floor. I am very excited for this. Mm-hmm. I fucking love Bug Snacks. This is all coming out April 28th. You can yes. play it on PC, PS4, PS5, Xbox Series X, Xbox One, and Switch. I'm glad Bug Snacks is going to be on more platforms because it should be. Mm-hmm. Also releasing April 28th is the House of the Dead remake. Oh, the one coming on Switch. Uh, it's coming to PC, PS4, and Xbox One. Oh, because I think they had oh. like just like the regular port of it come out on Switch recently. Oh, okay. but this seems to be like the actual remake. All right. Do I got? One more. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The 29th. Oh, this is, oh, this is a good couple of days. Nintendo Switch Sports comes out on, believe it or not, the Wii U? Yeah. No, just just, just the Nintendo Switch. Thankfully. Yeah. I, I, I probably still can't go into detail about what I played in the... It's not going to matter soon. And it's, oh, it's so much fucking fun. It's so good. Nintendo's already at the door ready to slap your ass. Oh, no, not my ass. Yeah. Anywhere but the ass. You're going to take the Joy-Con and just spank you with it. Oh, no. Not the Joy-Con. Oh, yeah. It Button side out. Uh, I kind of like that. Um, I am extremely excited for this. I am excited for the... um, Sports. uh, I... uh, Uh... but, uh, I'm I'm just gonna I'm just gonna say I'm gonna say something about this game, because I'm sure it's out there. I'm ready to spank your ass. And t- the bowling is like a battle royale thing now. Mm-hmm. It's so fucking good. It's so good. Uh, I want to. I want to play it right now. I want to play it right now. Go get it. I can't. It's Go two days. Break well, into t- a Best t- Buy. I can't. I don't have the means. Or the skills. But you have the determination. I don't think I do. Shit. You're fucked. I'm, f- I'm fucked. You're fucked <laughs> for it. what? A day and a half? Yep. A whole day and a half. Not even. Not even. Thanks for listening, everyone. Hello. We did it. It's been a long day for us, but we did it. Shut the fuck up! Did you just say hello and Siri greeted you? Apparently. That seems too general. I might have hit the button by accident. I've had my hands behind my back and my, oh, my okay. side. Okay, that that's more understandable. All right, Siri. Good talking to you. Yeah. Dave, good talking to you. Dylan, talk. Good. People, good talking towards you. People, good listening. Good. You know, you did such a good job of listening this week. Past weeks have been kind of meh. This week, really good. Here's the weekly question. What's four plus eight? If you can answer that, we know you made it to the end. Did you say here's the week of the question? I don't think so. Oh. I hope not. I also was so focused on that that I don't even know what your question was. Answer's 12. (laughs) I don't think it was a mathematical equation, but I have no choice but to believe you. You better believe me. All right. The answer is 12. (laughs) Good night. Good morning. Feel better. Good afternoon.